St. Lawrence Ecosystems is a, an introductory course in environmental biology at McGill and the learning outcomes for the course involve experiential learning, doing research in a field environment. Each project can have its own flavor because the students have different interests, whether it be uh, you know, insects or trees or anything in between. We're going to split into individual groups and Crystal and I need to spend time with each group before you head off in the woods. We specifically designed things where we didn't need the mobile technology. Mm -hmm. That's an important point. We didn't say we have to have the mobile technology for this to work. What we did was we said, okay, if we had mobile technology, what's the value added component? As an example, the one group worked with American crows and they were really keen to understand the, the different types of sounds that crows make. That's fighting. Fighting, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly that became a reasonable question because they could have, with their technology, examples right there with them in the field. So that, that could be leveraged as a way to um, change the style of the research question and make it a better question and a more interesting one. The element of time is really critical because we only have a certain number of hours and, and only a couple of sessions out in the field. And rather than recording things in their notebooks and taking pictures with a separate device, they were able to, for each uh, data point basically, they could take a photograph of the subject, they could record a GPS uh, location which then was immediately put onto a map. There's your map. Okay. So that would be like your transect one. Oh, so transect one. one is here. Yeah, and like... Oh, and then you can put transect one start, transect, transect one, one end. end. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And, and they were able to, you know, make additional notes all on the same device in a very short period of time. We're actually using our, our tablets to take pictures of the canopy cover. So we're standing over a hemlock sapling and using the camera to look up, which will give us an idea of how much light is penetrating. One of the big advantages is that we can put it on like a note-taking program and right there we can note like on the file that this is sapling number uh, one and we can transfer that to our data sheets. Uh, the picture is up here, so now I can make corresponding notes. Whereas if I was just using a regular camera, all the pictures would be just on my camera without a label to them, so it would be much harder to determine like which picture went with which set of data. And everything is here, so when I go back, it's all here, I can transfer it right to my computer and it's, it's very useful for that. In some cases, uh, they blew my mind in how to identify their particular study species. I think the Hemlock group had this wonderful YouTube mm -hmm. video that explained all the differences between all these different trees. They put that online. We, didn't, we did not tell them to do a YouTube video. This is Pseudocanadensis, commonly known as the Eastern Hemlock. The Eastern Hemlock is a coniferous tree found at the Morgan Arboretum. Okay, well, I will be seeing you in uh, probably within five minutes, so I'll troubleshoot on this. Box. I think another surprise I had with the mobile technology is I, I felt that it would be a great advantage that the students could connect directly with the instructors in the field and we could find them in the field. Last year I had to just run around the forest, all these different groups, find them where I didn't know where they were, and then deal with all the problems. On, but this just is a totally different, I mean, just in the last... 60 feet of walking, I touched base with three different groups. Everything going okay then? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. We don't have any troubles. Okay, that's good. The only real beef I had with the mobile technology was it was difficult sometimes to have video conferences effectively in the field. We were always able to communicate at the very least by text, but there were sometimes, I don't know if it was a connectivity issue, or um, it would have been nicer to be able to link in multiple groups. If they run into a problem and they need to go to an external source, I remember the, the group that was dealing with shell fungus once had to, were looking up a particular species and they could just do it right there on the tablet pull up a picture of it, so compare it to what they were finding. And that's very powerful, and I think that really does enhance the, the learning. I think just having the technology with them and having the option to do things like take photographs and make recordings of sounds and make recordings of video, that changed the way that they thought about how they could execute the projects. The learning outcomes in the course related to scientific communication the mobile technology was integral to that. We wouldn't have been able to have that level of science communication occurring without that ability to interact with the technology in the field.